right, so I know it's been quite some time since I did a video. I've been uh, working on moving, and I'm finally here in Florida. So I am going to do a video right now on a Juniperus chinensis or a Shimpaku juniper. So here we go. All right, so here's the tree. Here's the pot that I'm gonna be putting it in. I got this pot at a thrift store. I drilled a hole in the bottom because it didn't have a hole. And that's what all this is, is from drilling the hole. It's just dirty still. Probably wash it off. It's not a big hole. It's just big enough to let excess water out. And then this is the tree that I'm gonna be working on. I already sort of styled it. Um, back in Colorado, it's got some wiring on it. Doesn't look very good yet. Um, it is healthy. It's growing. It's got a couple of dead pieces on it. So we'll trim those off and repot it in this pot here and then uh, do some more styling. Then I'm going to cut it way back so that it fits in this pot better and uh, do some styling on the dead wood, like taking the, the bark off right here, whatnot, and just trimming it up because I didn't trim it a whole lot when I first got it because it was um, getting hot at the time and yeah, I just didn't want to kill it. So, so yeah, piece of nursery stock from I think I got it at either Walmart or Lowe's or something like that. It wasn't super expensive. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So what I'm going to do with the tree, I've got a couple of plants out in the yard that are needing some soil. So I'm going to just pull it out of the, pull it out of the pot and put this soil in with the other plant. Um, should be all right with it. Not cause any issues just want to get as much of the soil out of here as I can so I can change it to bonsai soil so I'll go ahead and do that and, and then come back all right so I bare rooted it took all the dirt and I did wash the roots because this is the first um, repotting of it so I wanted to see what the roots look like and of course the roots just gonna cause noise it has a pain in the neck but anyway, so um, the roots look really healthy. I've got some new white roots and some of them that are black in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these back because I'm putting it in this pot. Obviously, that's not all going to fit in there. So I'm going to take my um, root pruning scissors. You should always have a separate set of scissors for your root pruning because you don't want to ruin your really good scissors. So I'm just going to put it on the floor and then clean it up after I prune it up so <laughs> all right so that looks pretty good for the length and then I'm going to take out some of these larger roots like this one this don't need a lot of huge roots in there so I want to eventually get some of these roots bigger obviously and take out some of the smaller stuff so I kind of want to go kind of want to go to this this level down here so I'm going to take off some of the higher roots also and the branch I guess that was awesome <laughs> just, just trimmed off the branch oh well that's cool because I want that to be dead wood anyway so no big deal pick out some of this stuff. Right now what I'm doing is taking out some of the 
smaller roots right up next to the trunk so that the larger roots can get bigger so you can see them when they're in the pot. It's still a lot of roots for this pot. It's getting close. It looks like it would do all right in there. I'm not sure what any of this writing says on the pot, so I don't know if there's a side that says it's the front or a side that says that it's the rear or if it says something nice or if it says something bad on there. But, um, oh well, if you know and you can let me know what it says, that would be awesome. Because it might say peace and love and something else, but I don't know. But anyway. Now I'm going to put some soil in the bottom of the pot to get started. I am leaving a lot of roots on this tree because um, I just don't want to overdo taking the roots off just yet. I want to let it get nice and healthy and let it get growing and then next time I repot it I'll probably trim a lot of the roots off and see what happens from there. The only bad thing with having a lot of roots, sometimes it's really hard to get the soil into the roots, but just take your time and work them in there. Working in with your fingers a little bit, get started, and then uh, once you get it get it going, I use a chopstick to really work it in there. And this soil, I think, is a little bit different than my last video. Um, I don't really remember everything that's in this soil because I've kind of mixed mixed some soils together and basically it's just a very free draining soil so that your plant doesn't get too much water because too much water is not good and not enough water is not good. The rooster agrees with me. Alright, I kind of want it to lean a little bit to this side. So. Really enjoying the hot weather down here in Florida. This has been great. And there goes a tree. That was crazy. This tree's been about to fall over for a couple hours now, I guess. My brother said that he heard it cracking earlier today. I'm trying to find a chopstick. And the bugs are crazy over here. And there's a good chopstick. This one cool toolbox that my grandfather gave me. It was a fishing tackle box, but I'm using it for real bonsai stuff. So one way I like to do it, and I've seen a lot of people do it, kind of wiggle the chopstick down in there. kind of gets, gets the dirt all settled. You can't get all the dirt between the roots and all that. Put the dirt like really good in the roots to promote um, water transfer from the dirt to the roots and also to keep uh, bugs out.
I never really had an issue with bugs in the roots in Colorado, but I'm not sure what it's going to be like here in Florida. Just got down here a couple of weeks ago. Put any kind of prevention measures. Alright, so still working on it and I broke my chopstick. So it's always good to have spares. I'll probably just sharpen this one up and use it again later. But I have other ones. I like eating Chinese food a lot. So I like getting a lot of chopsticks because I like using chopsticks. And this one's kind of flimsy too, so I'm gonna use different one. Here's my other good one that I like. It's actually kind of flimsy too, but no big deal. As long as it works, right? It's very flimsy. I think I might have put it up too high on the soil. I think I put it too high. I'm gonna have to restart it. All right, so I just dumped it out, redoing it because it was too high. It was it's too flimsy, and I couldn't put enough soil over the top of it to get it to get more sturdy. Sometimes that happens. You just have to roll with the punches. Alright, so just working the soil in, getting her sturdy in the pot, and due to, I don't want to make this video 10 hours long, I'm going to go ahead and finish up the dirt portion of it, and then we'll come back to styling it and trimming it. I'm going to go too crazy with it, just want it a little bit cleaner here. So there's that. Wash off the brush a little bit. And I'm going to give it a little bit of a watering. It's kind of a hot day out here. Don't want the roots to get too, um, too dry. I'll give it a nice soak later on once I get everything all set up. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to trim it up and um, I'm not exactly sure how much I'm going to trim off of it because I don't know, I'm not 100% sure what I want it to look like yet. I kind of want to look at it for a couple of days after I get it depotted here and um, kind of see where see where I want to go with it. I, I want to do an upright and I want to do that's going to be the front and I want to be able to see the curvature of the main trunk here. This will be the apex over here and this is going to be one of the branches. It's going to be some dead wood. This will be the back branch right here. So the rest of these branches I'm not sure if I'm going to keep them or not or what I'm going to do. Probably just leave them on here for a little while to make sure that it gets nice and healthy. All the long shoots on here from just a couple of weeks that we've been out here in Florida. So it's growing really nice and looking pretty good. Got a couple of branches on here that I was thinking about leaving, but I'm going to take those off because they don't need them. And there's other branches in that same area. This little guy here, I think I am going to leave it on there for now. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it, but I just think it's kind of cool having the green in there. And this branch I'm going to leave alone. Let it grow out a little bit. Let it thicken up right here. So this branch, I wanted to be dead wood, but I also wanted to be kind of, kind of twisted. So I left the live stuff on there 
to and wired it to let it harden off and retain that shape before I um, before I killed it and took off all the the bark so that it would stay in that shape. So I'm gonna take the wire off now. If I can figure out which wires it is. So this tree's only been wired really for, uh, I'm thinking uh, a month and a half or two months. I'm not 100% sure how long you should leave the wires on a tree before. Uh, Alright, so I'm not sure how long you should keep wires on a tree. I know once it starts digging into the bark it's a good time to take it off and this is actually starting to dig into the bark so good time to take it off but I don't I don't know if there's an actual time frame like two weeks or three weeks or a month or whatever to leave it on there so I just wait until I notice it starting to dig into the bark and certain trees not sure about the um, junipers but I know certain trees if you leave it on there too long and it damages the bark by digging into it too hard it takes forever for the bark to recover so you want to be careful I know maples is like that it's really hard for them to recover and yeah so just know know that when you're when you're wiring a tree look up like when you should take it off and how long you should leave it on there so I'm gonna unwire all the branches right now I'm gonna leave the wires off um, for a while I'm gonna let the tree grow for a while so that um, so I can see where I need to rewire it again because uh, yeah, all these wires are really digging into the bark so I want to get them off of there so that I don't damage it too much. Some of it you won't see later on because um, because the foliage will fill it in and the bark will recover but I want to get it off there now so that it doesn't damage it worse. When you're taking the wire off, you can, uh, you can cut the wires off or you can unwrap it. I unwrap it because I like to reuse my wire. You don't have to reuse it. It's just something I like to do. Um, but if you are going to reuse the wire and you're going to unwrap it, you got to be really careful. Um, unwrapping it as you were when you were wrapping it so that you don't damage um, so that you don't really damage the bark where it dug into the bark because you could really like rip the bark off if you're not super careful um, when you're taking the wires off and that could cause you know, could cause you to kill a branch off or whatever Some of this wire I got at the um, hobby store. It's just aluminum wire. Um, I'm not sure what gauge this is, but just nice thick aluminum wire. And it's purple and it's kind of cool, but if you're going to make a tree for display with wire on it, obviously you don't want to do that, but it kind of makes it easier to see um, which branches you've wired with uh, colorful wire. And I just like purple, so kind of cool. I just want to hold. Sometimes it breaks. But I'll save the, I'll save the small pieces too um, and I'll recycle them. Cool. 
So, getting there, and one more wire on here. This is a really thick piece of wire, so I'm kind of unwrapping the tree around the wire because <laughs> it's thick enough that I'll probably damage the tree by unwrapping it off the tree. Um, to reuse a big piece of copper wire, like this piece of copper wire, you can anneal it, which basically you clamp the copper wire somehow on something that's not going to burn when you get it really hot. So don't clamp it to a piece of wood. Um, I use a vise that I have, and I clamp it to the vise or clamp it in the vise, and then you use a torch and you heat up the wire to where it's red hot and then um, let the wire cool um, on its own don't don't use water don't use anything to cool it down just let the wire cool down on its own and it basically it reseparates the the molecules in the wire and it makes it flexible again so once you put it on the tree you're bending it and as you're bending it it compresses the molecules so once you anneal it you release the molecules because if you notice this is like it's very stiff I mean it's not very easy to move and it's really just stiff and rigid which is good to hold your your branch in place but once your branch is in place you don't um, you don't want it to move so Having it solid after you've wired it is good, but to reuse that wire, you have to make it flexible again. So, okay, so I got very distracted. Um, and now it's like really freaking hot out here, so I'm all sweaty. Oh well, it's totally cool. So, basically, what I'm gonna do right now is I got all the wire off, got it potted and I was looking it over and so some of the branches are really long and eventually I want it like really compact I don't want it sticking out more than the, the, the pot but I need to work that in because I need new new growth and some back budding to do that this is a fresh um, obviously you saw it in the pot it's a fresh um, uh, pre bonsai now it's in a pot which doesn't yet make it a bonsai, it just makes it a, a tree in a pot. So we're working on it, can I refine some of the branching and then uh, we're going to rewire it again to where all the branches lay flat and straight. Um, still trying to determine which branches I really want to keep and which branches I, I don't really need to keep. This obviously is said so that this, this is going to be the apex over here so it's going to go up and over here um, it's front there like that so this will be the apex these two branches somehow I'm not sure yet this one I may or may not keep this one I'll probably keep this one I may or may not keep I'm not sure yet on the back side um, the front branch here these two branches I may or may not keep I'm not sure so, um, but I'm going to trim it back a little bit so that it can uh, get some new uh, back buddy. So, trim off some of the old branches here, like the, the stumps. Put them in with the soil. Trim off some of these longer shoots. It's not going to look perfect today. It's just going to be a little bit of work done. I'm going to trim back all of the the green a couple of a couple of nodes just take the tips off. So I've heard with junipers if you take off too much foliage then it starts getting juvenile foliage which I don't want because this isn't exactly adult foliage but it's not juvenile foliage so I want to keep it as Fine, fine of foliage as I can keep on here. So that's why I'm cutting it back because it's starting to get long. 
like the shoots, like if you can see this one, it's starting to get really long with a lot of space in between the inner notes. So I'm going to cut it back. And then if you look at this stuff here, this is what the juvenile foliage looks like. It's really spiky. And then if you look at this foliage, how it's not so spiky, that's what I want it to look like. But eventually it'll get more compact and more um, uh, pom-poms or puff balls, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I may or may not do that style with it. I might try to keep it um, uh, wild looking. I'm not sure. Not 100% sure what these look like in the wild. I haven't done a whole lot of research on them yet, so I just want to keep keep it healthy while I'm doing that research and finding out what exactly I want to do with it. Um, pretty cool tree. I've always wanted a Shimpaku in my collection. And Colorado, you can have them, but if you do just one wrong thing with it, really easy to kill them. It's super dry in Colorado. And um, the Shimpakus are more of a tropical juniper, so um, the winters can be havoc on them really, really quickly. So you want to bring them inside, but then you got your heater going and all that, so it dries out the air in the house. So I mean, it's just you're just fighting it and fighting it. So um, pretty excited to be out here in Florida now and be able to have some more of the trees that I've been wanting to get and have in my collection without just wasting trees and wasting money on trees that I can't keep alive anyway. So, so I'm just going to go through and cut off all the tips on all these and I'm going to call it a day on this one. Let it grow again. I'm going to let it go crazy this next um, growth. And, um, and then I'll cut it back again and we'll let's keep doing that to, to get it all refined and finer and finer branches and finer and finer foliage and that's the plan for now. see a lot of a lot of new new growth on some of this older older foliage it looks like it's starting to do some branching if you can see like right here at the tips these short spots there's going to be all new new foliage so it looks like it's doing really good out here and um, just going to grow like crazy so I'm going to have to keep up on the, the trimming to keep it from going too crazy but I want to let it go a little bit crazy so that it like, so that this branch can get um, some adult foliage on it rather than just all new juvenile foliage um, I kind of want to trim it all back but I'm not sure if trimming it all back is just going to make it all more new juvenile foliage or if it's going to start growing um, more adult like foliage. I kind of want to rewire this branch but it's got the wire marks on it so I want that to recover before I grow or put new wire on it. So for now I'll just cut it back and watch it grow.
don't normally do like hedge type trimming on the junipers, but because this is all juvenile growth, it's all going to eventually go away anyway, so I'm just going to trim it way back for now so it can get a good shape on it, a good start. The branches are still all crooked. Eventually, I'm gonna. Eventually, if you see it's going up and then down this way, eventually I'm gonna have the wires to where it holds it um, flat across, so that the, the foliage grows outwards rather than up and down at, a, at an angle. But for now, I'm just gonna let it let it go. kind of take off all the ends. I think there's one more right here. Yeah. So I think I'm just going to leave it like this for now and um, just watch it grow and see. Actually, one more right here. <laughs> so funny, you could just one more for an hour, but okay. I'm going to put my scissors away so I don't put more for another hour. Um, but I'm going to leave it like that for now. I think it looks pretty good. Um, to start with, like I said, eventually all of these branches are going to be um, laid over in the right direction. Um, I kind of want to let the, the bark recover from the wire on it. And then then we'll rewire it again. I'll show you, I'll show you that video. For now, that is it. Thanks for watching and like and subscribe and leave me comments because I haven't gotten any comments on any of my videos yet. So it'd be kind of cool to get some comments. If you like it, you don't like it, just be nice. All right, have a good day. She never comes out. And there she goes, back in her little house. Hey, there's the other one. Wanna say hi? Okay.